Our quilt now is called Supernova A or Nova. A. A. Nova. She's it's Amy Van Gerp <laughs> and she's from Canada, so we're not sure how she says this. But this quilt was quite a challenge for her. It was had fullness where it shouldn't have fullness. And she had to uh, unpick, or she called it unseam, the outside border to bring in, to make it unwavy. She starched it, uh, probably used a few cans of spray starch, starched it to try and get everything to recess and lay flat. And then this inside here had a real big fullness, a lot of fullness there. And so she had to reseam that, reseam the outside border. But she also quilted this to death. To death. Yes. <laughs> so that it would recess that, bring that in and make it, and look how flat that lays. She did have to do some reseaming in maybe some of her points here. Uh, but the one thing that I really liked is she added a lot of micro quilting in every block in all of the white. And she took, changed the thread color. So she used the thread color matching up the thread or the fabric, but she changed this thread color in these just subtle and just quilted it to death. And it lays flat. Anything you, oh, she did add some, um, some okay. couching on it as well. Yeah. Just get, add I, a little bling. I think her circular quilting adds to that drawing it in and circular kind always of does more than down. straight line, yeah. yeah. But she didn't do it all the same, so she kind of sectioned things off, kind of did that divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. I love it because she used two layers of batting. On this one, you're kind of like, did she really? But you can tell in here she did. <laughs> but she <laughs> quilted this down so much that you do see that channel around to divide them. So beautiful way that she did it. And it lays flat. This is Elaine Gilmore's quilt, and we don't know what she's titled it, but we titled it Blue and White. Is that good? Blue and White. Blue work? and White works for me. Okay, so if you come in real close on this quilt, you'll see that there are holes in it. It's a very loose weave fabric on part on these uh, triangles here. There's holes in it, so, and there's also stains. So if we move over here, You'll see there's some stains and they're all throughout it. As I move over here, you can see quite a bit of staining here. But because this is such a loose weave fabric and, so, and it's hand piece, so it's old, I would say. Yeah. I would say that it would, if we were to wash it and try to get the stains out, we may mo get more holes, it might disintegrate. We don't want yeah. that. Yeah. And so she just chose to quilt it like it is. And so Marie, do you want to Talk about the, uh, the quilting part of it. So the quilting, what I like is that you have this channel that she created and then she put a motif inside of it, but she didn't take that motif all the way to the edge. She left it and left a little channel that kind of goes around it that gives that space and a little definition to the curve. Well, the nice thing is this is a curve and this design is actually triangular, so it's more straight. Yeah. So it gave that. Yeah. The one thing that I see is this block is a block on point, and this is the block, and then this is the other block. But she treated this, Yeah. Yeah. she flowed into this block, and this is really, to me, the focal point of this quilt. And you'll notice that like here, she's got a different color of fabric than she does here and it just adds to the yeah. personality of the quilt. So the just, antiqueness yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. you're not it's gonna beautiful. change it, but it's beautiful how it. Yeah, so chose beautiful binding that just accented it and it's a beautiful quilt. This quilt was quilted by Mary Beth Crapel and it is called Sunshine Stars. And I love how she broke this up. This was hand pieced, so hand stitched, and they are not square. They're not even straight. Applique on here, which it by the applique kind of created a little puff in it. Mary Beth did use two layers of batting. She used a Hobbs 8020 and a wool. And so that created that nice puff, but some of them have more puff. See, more and I think like this one, you can kind of see that it's kind of, 
you know, that's really a lot. So by not quilting that down, she was able to handle that different. And you know, as we were looking at this earlier, we <laughs> looked at this very one and we're like, oh my goodness, there's some stain. And we didn't see this because the quilt was so beautiful overall that we didn't see. And it, then we started looking and we did find some stains. So sometimes we have to be really careful on treating, you know, washing because we don't know what condition the fabric is in. So by treating one area, you might mess up the rest of it. So and we, yeah, you don't know how, <clears throat> the color fast of the fabrics. So, And one thing that I just love about this is she found a backing and binding that to me, I thought it was the very same fabric. So you can see right here the binding and if you look close, you can see, no, they're not. But overall, it looks like it. And then the backing is that same, is that same fabric. And we'll put that against it. They're not the same, but it, she did a really good job of matching that up. So I think by disguising or by finding it alternate ways to uh, accentuate the block rather than right on the seam, then you don't see all those crooked seams. Yeah, so her star, she actually took that star out because not all of the piecing is accurate. Some of it has points missing and some of it had too much of the point. And so she took that points out, created another boundary around yeah, it. Yeah, so here's this block where the seam is really here. And yeah. you know, it's hand pieced, so it's not you know, to me, I thought hand piecing would be more accurate, but on a lot of the quilts that we're seeing, they're not as accurate. But Mary Beth did a great job yeah, it's of quilting this and making it just beautiful. <laughs> this quilt was done by one of Marie's favorite quilters. My BFF. <laughs> this quilt was done by me. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my favorite things about this is that you just did a channel in between here, a straight line, it's surrounded by curves. Okay, wait, let's step back here. This is a grandmother's flower garden, and so the name of this is called Not My Grandmother's Flower Garden. Normally, a grandmother's flower garden is, is all, well, a grandmother's flower garden is always hand-pieced. I haven't seen one not, because it's all oh. these little hexes here. So it's all hand-pieced. And normally it's always hand quilted. Well, we didn't hand quilt it because we're machine quilters. We're long arm machine quilters. And so I went through here and added all these curls and I wanted it to be continuous con without having yeah, to break yeah. my thread. I, cho I chose the same thread color. And so I would curl through here all the way through. But then as I would get to a point, I would actually travel in and create the straight line. And as I'm creating the straight line right here, I would travel in here and I would make a mo motif inside here, travel back out. There is my travel up here. And so I tried to make this as continuous without, because if you look at it, there's a lot of these motifs. I didn't even do the math, but there's a lot here that I would have been cutting my thread to create all of this. So as we turn this over, you can actually see the travel path as it travels through, creates a motif and goes out and it was continuous. It made it a really fun design on the back, doesn't it? It is. Yeah. I love the colors, all the colors. So how did you decide what to bind it with? Yeah, a neutral <laughs> and a green is a neutral so I bound it with the same fabric that I uh, placed on the back and the green there's a lot of greens in there but it's just a nice soft green kind of a blue green because there's blue and you know it was so fun to do and I'm so glad to say that it's mine <laughs> <laughs> so what things did you change on this quilt because well, I had to cut off some of these edges out here because the triangle went out here and I was not going to do that type, so I squared it up. 
Yeah. I did have to add a little tension on the machine to make sure it laid straight. It was pretty straight, but I did have but to. But I think you had fullness in, I think the way you quilted it handled the fullness. Yeah, yeah. And it lays really flat. It's really nice. We did lay it on the floor and spray it a little bit, as you know, but not much. Yeah. So it's to block it. We to blocked block it. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's it's kind of nice to say that it's mine. <laughs> oh, I wish it was mine. This quilt is something old, is new again. It was done by Harriet Carpenini. Carpenini. And she basically put one big motif over each square. So that kind of hides the different variations in whether the piecing is square or not square. She also used the same color thread throughout. And so she does have some high contrast in her fabrics, but she used that white thread throughout. So you're not seeing as much as the, of the motif as you might would like to. Each motif is different. She pebbled through here, but let's show you some of those motifs on the back. So each one of the nine blocks has a different motif. Beautiful the way it's pieced. And with the two layers of batting, it just gave it a really loft here, a little trapunto look without having to trapunto because she used a lot of high density quilting yep. in to make that stand out. This quilt was done by Debbie Brown. It's called Kansas in August. Love this quilt. Happy, this is a happy it? quilt. Yeah. yeah, this is a great, well, August great is a happy colors. Month, isn't it? Oh, yeah, <laughs> love the colors. And at first I thought, are those seeds in the sunflowers? But that's just part of the fabric. The print. So smart Debbie, she added the binding that matches that little green that's in there. So reds and yellows are kind of hard to match when you're trying to match colors. So one thing about this was Debbie said she had a plan of how she wanted to quilt this, but once she started at it, it didn't work. It, you, some, you have to be open to that change to be able to tackle the problems that you will come up with. So the problem that she came up with most were all of these circles here were just really full. This is, um, pieced, machine pieced. All of this is machine pieced, which I'd I, like to I, figure yeah, that one out. How they do. Okay, so it's machine pieced, and but this part here was just really full. And so to get take that fullness out, we know that if you add a lot of quilting, you take that fullness out. And circle quilting and helps circles do, do it, it more. Yeah. So there are some tucks still in this because there was so much fullness, <laughs> but she really, it lays flat. She got that fullness out, and then she did her, her uh, ribbon candy around here. This is something that Debbie loves to do and does a fantastic job of it. And she created, rather than see, you've got the, the motion of the quilt going this way, but she actually broke that up and created blocks here with the channel quilting, with the quilting. which yeah. I thought was really fun to do. So another thing is she just did a curved line around here and then filled it in with feathers. So that's another thing with the curves to handle the fullness that you're gonna find. And left all of these triangles and these squares unquilted so it kind of stood up and, and have a little bit of a trapunto effect because she added two layers of batting. So beautiful quilt and that green binding that she matched up with this green square right here, that little green square right there. That's where she finally went to, because she couldn't find a red or a yellow to match, so she matched it up, and it works great with that green binding. This quilt was done by Diane Henry. It's called Laurel's Garden Party, and it is just peaceful. It is. It's I just, love looking at it. Yeah, it's just, the colors, everything is just nice. I love how she left these pieces not quilted. Well, so she mimicked the leaves, the, the petals here. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Just so floating, nice. falling. So these borders were terribly wavy, big wavy borders. And she controlled those. And then, rather than have this one straight pieced border, she did this little channel of quilting along here and then interrupted it this way into the pebbled quilting. So it's beautiful. So with the wavy border that she had, by adding some uh, smaller micro quilting in it, it helped draw that in 
so that it laid flat. And that's, that's the hardest part of some of these quilts that come that have been sitting in boxes or that have been pieced, yeah. is that they don't necessarily lay flat. They, you know, they didn't have a... But a, a lot piecing. of quilting controls all of that. Yeah, so, so. micro quilting throughout it lays flat. It, that lets these flowers pop or the leaves pop out. And it's just, it is, it's a peaceful garden party. <laughs> this is my quilt that I did. And who are you? Uh, Marie Eldridge. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a Holiday Heritage. And this <laughs> had the same thing. Tackle all of those loose spots with lots and lots of quilting. Was so, it like uneven, like fullness in some places. Fullness in some places. This is a hand applique, but I think somebody different did each quarter because they're very different in size. They are not at all symmetrical. And so as I started to quilt the design, I was like, ah, that's not gonna work. So very asymmetrical in how I handled it to kind of take away from that. And yet the center has a symmetrical to kind of balance that and make it kind of trick your eye into looking twice and thinking, oh, yeah, that looks so this good. is symmetrical. And you also created that again underneath as it goes. And then I noticed here you were talking about this, that that's not even all the way around. This goes out here and that's, you know, that's not even. So how did you decide how to do it? I just started that channel and as I got to each quadrant, then I just figured out how it would work with the piecing, or the applique is actually what this is. So, and then the applique, they Wait, always, wait, I wanna go what, back what, to what? that. What? I wanna go back to that. So one thing that you said <clears throat> that you didn't do, that you wish you'd, if you were to do this again, because I asked Marie, if you were to do this again, what would you do differently? I would have marked, especially the big so you didn't mark it. Point. You put it on and then create it as you went. Is Start that the way you go. did? That's how I whirl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So go. and then I just kind of let it talk to me how it wants to be quilted, and it, right? So what did you so, use here to get these waves? So these are actually our wave rulers, which these this channel stays the same size, and then this one kind of spokes out, takes a little width, and they're very controlled here. Just the two designs, but then out in here, there are a lot of different designs. My favorite are the designs that are on top of the applique, because I use the same color of thread out here as on the green and on the red, which is kind of a little darker thread. I think it kind of gives it an antique kind of so feel it, to it. So these are all solid fabrics with no print in them. So by you adding this different thread color, it actually gives it like a print. It does. Which I think, yeah. I love, I love. You know, and people say, oh, you're not supposed to quilt over the applique, but I think what you did here, you gave it a channel here so that it, you know, gave it a nice, it stood out, and I think it's beautiful. But, you know, something, it I know me. you're going to say there's a stain. <laughs> there's, well, there's more than one stain. As I have really, really looked in on this quilt, I, am, I saw some stains because I'm just analyzing her, her quilting. Did you try to take the stains out? No. I did not it? want to jeopardize this quilt top at all or take a chance of it's anything coming old. undone or whatever. So a lot of it, you know, is hand stitched. So there's a stain so. here with a water stain and you just left it and you really don't even see that. There's a stain over here that has a water stain around it, but it's like it adds to the It kind of does, you know, it's what you got and it's like. So let's just turn it over so you can see all the quilting that's in there. Beautiful, Marie. You did a great oh, job of quilting you. this. Lots of fun. Yeah. All right. This is Grandmother's Doilies from Carrie Rollins, and I think she did an amazing job of creating a doily effect around this Dresden plate. Isn't that pretty beautiful? It is. I love how this quilts and just looks like a doily. It does. So she used two blocks, the doily itself, and then here's the other 
motif that she put in here. So she kind of ignored the piecing and then just added this block here with framing that and the doily itself. And it's just beautiful. It is. That's a great tip for just a regular quilt. And she I used think. the same th color thread, even though it went through this dark green and the red, the very same color thread in this motif as she did in the doily itself. Turned out nice. Now, let's turn it over again so you can see. <sighs> beautiful, beautiful. Nice design. This one is called Diamonds in the Rough. It was quilted by Kathy Zimmerman, one of our employees here, and she did an incredible job with what she had to work with. And sometimes I think you get a little off track with, she tried to tackle a big part of this. And so let's see the diamond. There's a diamond. As see it goes down how there. big that is? And that's too Here's a much diamond. to handle. And it has some stains in it. She just left that. That's part of the beauty of the quilt. So she also has a small diamond here that she accented yeah, and yeah. one by Vicki. So. so her comment was the piecing was not straight. There were points missing. It just wasn't straight. And she decided, she before she realized that, she decided she was going to quilt it using that piecing. And then she got to realize as she was quilting that the lines, some of them were closer together than others because of the piecing. So she, that was a little struggle with her. So she says, I would rethink that again. And the other thing is because she was quilting this on an Avante and the Avante has a throat space, a quilting space of about 15 inches. This, she wanted to do a lot of space here. And she said, I had to adjust my frame or the fabric back and forth and back and forth to get what she wanted here as this full repeat going around. So that was a struggle that she felt. She says even a larger throat space, the fusion or the infinity, would have still struggled with this because yeah, of this it space. Was so light. So the thing I would say is don't be discouraged if you have a quilt top or you want to buy a quilt top and it doesn't look even because there are ways to quilt it that it still looks amazing. Yes, and so I would have never thought to quilt this the way she did. I think it's amazing. You can see a lot of texture going through here. And I don't notice the piecing that she's talking about that has your missing points. It's that overall quilting with the design. I think it worked great. And she used the same color thread throughout that's a white thread and as it went through this pink area it actually picked yep. up the pink yep. color so yeah. i think she did a beautiful job with a hard quilt <laughs> at the end she did a lot of unpicking she did a lot of unpicking to make this quilt work to try and line up the squares that's right she unpicked yeah. a lot yeah. restitched yes it was a it was a work <laughs> This quilt was quilted by Sarah Watts, and she's one of our employees at Handy Quilter, and it's called Vintage Curved Nine Patch. Now, her comments on this quilt, she said, I tried to press it to get it to lay flat, and she says, I just gave up. She says, there were so many issues with it, I didn't want to harm the fabrics, and so she quilted it, and a lot of it is done with a pro stitcher, but uh, she said, and a lot of, there are problems, a lot of problems as far as the piecing and the way, the fullness that she found in here. So she said, she admitted, there are a lot of tucks in this. So if we look along here, and we didn't see any tucks in this part of it, the tucks is, we saw them in the white. So I thought they were seams. And let's see if we can find one now because we were going, oh, we didn't notice those. Right, we gotta find one. So here's one There's here. <laughs> And you had one over there you were pointing out. I did but have one. you were right close to it. Oh, right here. Yes, yeah. so let's, let's come in on this one. This one, because of this fullness, and there's actually a tuck in the piecing, and she, she thought, well, do I want to take this apart and make <coughs> it work? But she didn't. She just let the fabric, this, the straight lines, there is a huge tuck right in here, which, as looking out on it, I didn't see those. And... And she said there were some places on the quilt that was not pieced at all. And so 
just little areas and so she said I just let the quilting mat it down quilt it so that it would hold it together so it was stitched down yes yeah. yes so she chose a real modern design for these light colors mm -hmm. and I love that she chose a color of thread that doesn't scream or take away from it so what you really this. see when you look at it is the piecing you see the blocks mm -hmm. and she did a very traditional design in here of feathers so she matched that up and let's just lift it so you can see because this is beautiful so she chose a backing fabric that was solid so that then she could let that backing that design really shine in her quilting it's beautiful I love it This quilt was quilted by Linda Mattioti, and it's called Shoe Fly, which is the block, gets a second chance. So the couple of things that I've noticed on this quilt is she used, as we come around here, she's got some kind of um, wavy looking design. Kind of a filler. Filler, and she used monofilament thread. So you don't see the thread color, and yet the motif that she placed, see how big this motif is that she created? And I'm sure she created that in Art and Stitch and did it with the Pro Stitcher. She quilted that in white thread. So then she's got the white thread out here as this swag border, which who would have thought to, to do what she did here? This is a border going around itself there, around the quilt. And I love how she did that outside. Okay, so this didn't come to her as a scalloped border. And it actually had an extra row on the bottom. So she took that row off and just squared it up and made those motifs and then gorgeous. Yeah, and then she just scalloped it. And then she had to find a binding for it. And so she couldn't find the exact thread color or the exact fabric color. And so to make it work, she placed a white piping and it broke up that binding. And to me, you can't tell it there. Oh, you different. can't. She did a beautiful job on it. She yeah. did. And we can even pull that over so you can see how beautiful that's quilted on the back. All white thread in the bobbin, but the monofilament throughout this in the top and then the rest of it was white. So it turned out, this was, this was just the one of my The two colors are just stunning. Yeah, the yeah. white and the blue is just beautiful. 